come blast off with me for an epic experience at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. Imagine this like the perfect zoo visit where you arrive on time to see the fun macaw release that opens the zoo, you have unlimited energy to walk up and down the hills to see all your favorite animals and birds, who, by the way, decide to be out in the open and awake, and at the end, you don't need a foot rub, unless you really want one. We must start off before even hitting the front entrance with this 27-foot, 20,000-pound bronze lion statue balanced precariously on one leg. This very impressive statue was unveiled in 2018 and is a grand representation of what you're about to see inside the zoo. The next immediately impressive attribute of the zoo you may notice is the ease of entrance. The parking is ample and free, and you barely need to slow down to a full stop to scan your ticket and start your zoo adventure. This makes the zoo perfect for frequent flyer staycationers like me. Once you're in the front gate, you can grab a map or, better yet, scan the QR reader with your phone to save paper, which the zoo encourages you to do. We arrived early for your zoo experience so you don't miss the McCall release that marks the official opening of the zoo at 9 a.m. You folks came here to see some wildlife, am I right? Am I right? Woo, all right, now, you may have noticed I brought a pretty uh, noisy, welcoming committee. Typically, right around now, I am looking for a volunteer, preferably somebody short and in the front. All right, you young lady, come on down. Tell us your name for the crowd. Avery, let's hear it for Avery, everybody. Come on down, Avery. But first, Avery, hold on, hold on. I got some very important advice for you. You want to look up, but keep your mouth shut. All right, everybody, let's hear it for Avery. We're going to count her down in three, two, one. Let her rip. And away. The zoo is now officially open, and we'll start off our experience checking out the flamingo habitat, which sits up front, and then head a few feet over to the right to get on the tour bus. There are six different species of flamingos, many of which you can see at the San Diego Zoo. These include flamingos indigenous to South America, Mexico, Africa, and the Caribbean. Different flamingos vary in size, with the greater flamingo standing up to 4.7 feet tall, while the lesser flamingo tops out at 2.9 feet. The tour bus is free and a great way for new visitors to check out the lay of the land. The park is massive, and this 35 to 45 minute tour can help you plan your strategy. The tour bus is going to circle the perimeter of the park, and the first stop is going to be the tiger habitat in the tropical rainforest. You can't walk the path of the bus, so my map is showing the walking directions down Monkey Trail and then the Tiger River Trail. If you want to see the tiger from the bus, make sure to get on the second deck when loading. You may have to wait a little longer, but it'll be well worth it. Keep in mind that the best viewing is always going to be from the walking paths. The bus tour is more to get you oriented to the layout of the zoo. Kane, that is an awesome now I'm going to take you back up the walking trail to show you some of the animals you will see if you make your way down the Tiger River by foot. You will pass a variety of monkeys since you're starting on the monkey trail. This monkey is the tufted capuchin, which is native to the Amazon. Either he's lost his keys or this box helps mimic the monkey's natural foraging habits. Further down the trail, we find the Malayan tapir, these primitive animals are related to the horse and rhino. If you've ever seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, 
You may recall that these are the animals living amongst the prehistoric humans in the beginning of the movie at the dawn of man. Going back down and past the tiger enclosure, we exit the rainforest habitat of the Tiger River Trail and connect with the Hippo Trail. This will wind us around the back of the zoo into the Lost Forest, where we will find one of my favorite locations in the whole zoo, the monkey and otter habitat. Honestly, I haven't seen any otters here in the last couple of years, so I'm not sure if they're still there. Either way, the red-tailed and Allen swamp monkeys will provide plenty of entertainment. continue down the path from the Swamp Monkeys, you will arrive at Lower Park Way. From here, you can walk up onto the platform that skirts the large aviaries for the Andean Condor and the ornate Hawk Eagle. These majestic birds are currently off habitat, as are many other bird species due to a bird flu outbreak here that's been ongoing at the time of this shooting. This is the lowest portion of the zoo, and from here we're going to walk up a decent slope towards the polar bear plunge. On the way there, we'll pass a variety of gazelle and antelope species. All gazelles are antelope, but not all antelope are gazelles. There's some confusing differences, but one of the easiest ones to see is that gazelles are usually smaller, like these here. Right next to the antelope, we find the peccaries. These pig-like creatures are not in fact pigs, although both are hooved mammals with an even number of toes, four on each foot. This puts pigs and peccaries in the order that also includes giraffes, hippos, deer, cattle, and antelope. That would explain why these little creatures are next to the antelope enclosures. If we just turn around, right across the tiny road from the antelope, you'll find the polar bear plunge. The little cart you see here is an inside look tour, an educational and entertaining 90 minute tour that is great for a family outing. These tours run $89 and up for each person on the tour. The family on this tour just got escorted into the polar bear plunge by a guide right before it opened up to the public. Coming close on the heels of the inside look cart, is the tour bus we were on earlier. As I said, ride on the top deck because this is the only way you're going to see the polar bears from the bus, and the only way you're going to see them at all not behind glass. You may notice the lack of snow in the exhibit and the slightly brownish color to the bears. That is because the zoo is mimicking the summer on the tundra, which is not unlike the fall weather in San Diego. Let's take a little stroll through the different viewing areas inside the Polar Bear Plunge.
Behind the polar bear plunge, you will find the Canadian lynx. There is also an arctic aviary, but it is closed along with many of the other bird habitats due to the flu that I mentioned earlier. If we travel a short way down the path from the polar bear plunge, we will encounter an innovative experience at the zoo, the Elephant Odyssey. This 7.5 acre area was opened in 2009 with modernized facilities to house the elephants and maintain their health. This goal was combined with portraying a link between the animals you see in the exhibit today with extinct animals that roamed Southern California in the Pleistocene era 10,000 years ago. This includes the elephant's extinct relative, the Columbian mammoth, as well as cheetahs, camels, horses, and much more that you wouldn't expect. The Elephant Odyssey can be accessed by the route we took to get here on the tour bus, or more easily by the Sky Fari, which I'm on right now. The bridge you see below me right now leads directly into the Elephant Odyssey. To get to the bridge from the front of the park, walk up Treetop Way, shown here on the map. Now I'll walk you over the bridge from the treetop directly into the Elephant Odyssey. We enter the Elephant Odyssey through the Fossil Portal, where you will see a recreation of the La Brea Tar Pits, complete with skeletal remains of extinct animals. This portal, which simulates an archaeological dig site, is adorned with photos of many of the active archaeological dig sites dotted across Southern California. The overall message is one of conservation and preventing our current wildlife from becoming extinct. This is the state-of-the-art elephant care facility, where the animals have daily checkups, including regular pedicures. All animals, reptiles, and birds in the Elephant Odyssey have extinct relatives that lived in Southern California, including this tapir, whose extinct ancestors used to inhabit the California coast.
Even the camel has an extinct relative that used to live in Southern California. Imagine that. In keeping with the idea that this is meant to help you truly experience the zoo, we're going to hop back on the Skyfari and take a real-time relaxing ride back across to the front of the zoo and pick up the adventure there. Over to the right, we can see the circular hummingbird habitat, and then the newest area of the zoo, the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. After I bring this baby in for a smooth landing, we will head directly over to both of those exhibits. The hummingbird habitat debuted in 2021 with an eye toward establishing connections between people and wildlife. Like the other aviaries you will soon explore, the habitat allows you to be close with the birds in a safe and controlled environment.
This 3,800 square foot habitat holds over 40 birds from 17 different species, all native to the Americas. Some of the hummingbirds are native to San Diego, so much so that it's possible to see more hummingbirds on your way in from the parking lot than in the actual habitat. But that's because there's a lot more than hummingbirds to see here. The newest area of the zoo, opening in 2022, is the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. This area replaces the old children's zoo and is the go-to destination in the zoo for families with young kids. It's just to the far left of the entrance, so it's easy to get to. It's even closer to the exit, so after your kids burn themselves out playing, you can cart them off quickly back to the parking lot. That's one of the big advantages of living in San Diego, so you can just drop by the zoo for an hour or two with no pressure to explore everything. In addition to the wonderful play area, the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp has neat educational exhibits, a glass-lined beehive where you can observe the hard-working bees inside the hive, and an area where you can see even harder-working leafcutter ants in a constant conveyor belt carrying leaves from a tree into their nest. The area hosts numerous insects, butterflies, lizards, monkeys, naked mole rats, and much, much more.
Coming out of the Wildlife Explorer's base camp, if we turn to the left and pass between the hummingbird and Komodo dragon habitats, we will find the Reptile Walk, which opened in 2021. In the Reptile Walk, you can enjoy open-air, outdoor displays of large lizards, turtles, tortoises, alligators, and crocodiles. It has three separate structures for housing turtles, amphibians, and snakes native to California. Here we have the large and very old Galapagos tortoises. Can't blame them for being slow. The oldest one here is over 150 years old. What I didn't know before shooting this video is that San Diego County is the most biodiverse county in North America. Now we're going to head back to the front to catch a monkey trail over to the Scripps Aviary. This 80 foot tall aviary was the largest in the world when it was built in 1923, and it's still quite impressive. It houses over 130 colorful African birds. The Scripps Aviary is in Gorilla Tropics, so right out the back door of the aviary we will find the gorilla habitat. Gorillas live in groups of anywhere from 5 to 30 called a troop. The troop is led by an experienced silverback. Male gorillas are called blackbacks when they're 8 to 12 years old. They don't become silverbacks until they're 12 to 15. Gorilla food includes leaves, stems, fruits, seeds, roots, ants, and termites. We'll take our leave from the gorillas and walk up the path into the treetop and over to the bridge that we use to get to the Elephant Odyssey. But instead of taking the bridge, we're going to find the hidden staircase and take that down all the way to Lower Center Street. The stairs are hidden behind an elevator which is right next to the bridge. If you want to get your steps in, the San Diego Zoo is the perfect place to do it. On Lower Center Street, we find the Asian Passage. This is where you used to find the very popular giant pandas, but they were on loan and eventually returned to China. 
but not before a hugely successful research and breeding program that has elevated the giant panda from endangered to threatened. You will still see the cute red panda here. This local hawk is not a zoo resident, but he seems to be even more interested in this red panda than I am. I know we just walked down a large set of stairs, but now we're going to take a little diversion up a different set of stairs to check out a couple of aviaries that could be accessed from the Asian Passage. These are the Owens Aviary and the Parker Aviary. If you plan to use this video as a guide for your visit, pay close attention to where these stairs are. The Owens Aviary theme is somewhat in keeping with the Asian Passage. It features 45 different species of birds from Southeast Asia, but also Australia. We need to keep ascending several tiers up the hill to make it to the Parker Aviary, which houses 15 species of birds from Central and South America. Now we are going to head back down the stairs and up Lower Center Street to connect with the winding path through Africa Rocks. 
I bet you're glad you're watching this video instead of doing all this walking. There are a lot of cool exhibits in Africa rocks. This includes an aquarium with sharks and penguins, and a massive area dedicated to the fascinating animals of Madagascar. The penguins are off habitat from the flu, and some of the other exhibits we'll pass by are best seen in person rather than on camera. The first place we'll stop in Africa Rocks is the Woodland Aviary. This is my favorite aviary and one of my favorite places in the zoo and hosts 30 species of brightly colored and very active birds. It's vertically designed so you can appreciate birds from the treetops and cliffs all the way down to the ground. The earthy cliffs are dotted with holes, home to the multicolored bee eater. As the name implies, these birds are adapted to safely eat bees by removing their stinger. You will see them here munching on mealworms, often tossed in the air by a trainer to keep up their aerial hunting skills. More than any other birds in the aviary, they seem to be constantly munching. In the trees on the lower level, you will find a wide variety of other colorful birds. One of my favorites is this little character that puffs up like a bright yellow cotton ball when it flies. This nest is left over from the black-headed weaver. In the spring, you will see the males carefully crafting these nests from the surrounding vegetation, preparing to create a family. To wind down our zoo experience, we'll continue down the path through Africa rocks first passing the expansive baboon habitat, then we will hit the outback to see the cuddly koala. The journey will finish on the loop through the urban jungle.
The sprawling homogeneous baboon habitat has multiple viewing areas, the higher levels in open air and the lower levels behind large glass panels. This provides a variety of angles to experience the baboons as they hang out in different locations. These baboons travel in troops of up to several hundred individuals in the wild. They can be found in large numbers in Ethiopia, Somalia, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia. These baboons are primarily plant eaters, but also consume bird eggs, small mammals, and carrion, as well as insects. As we exit Africa Rocks, we arrive in the Outback, where we will primarily see the koalas. Many of the other Australian mammals, such as kangaroos and wallabies, are now found at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. You will most often catch the koalas sleeping, since they sleep about 20 hours a day. This is due to their low energy diet, which consists entirely of eucalyptus, whose toxic leaves take a lot of energy to digest. We will finish our zoo experience walking the loop of the urban jungle, starting with the rhinoceros. They may not look like it, but the rhino can run up to 40 miles an hour. Let's take some time to enjoy the giraffe. <laughs> These tallest of land animals are fun to watch. You can even enjoy feeding them. I recommend stopping by the tours and membership booth up front if you're interested in arranging this type of experience. Our final visit is to the Greater Flamingos, hanging out in this grassy habitat at the rear of the urban jungle loop. These flamingos are surprisingly tall, much more so than the ones you'll see up front at the zoo. Well, this wraps up our experience at the world-famous San Diego Zoo. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far and haven't clicked the like button, what's up with that? Even though this journey is ending, click on the link to continue your staycation San Diego adventures.